everyone that's everyone that don't doesn't know the difference between Bitcoin and every other altcoin kind of is it now has an interesting example of the difference between Bitcoin and uh, Luna, right? They understand the difference, at least at least figuratively understand the difference. The regulators are now going to have a catalyst to move faster, right? Because now, you know, Gensler said, you know, someone's going to get hurt if we don't fix this. And the congressional view three months ago was, no, don't, don't do anything. Don't move too fast because you might mess up the market. Mm -hmm. And Gensler said, well, a lot of these, are, these exchanges are trading security tokens, and we don't know what they're backed by. And when they crash, someone's going to lose a lot of money. Global markets have suffered major losses in early May, and MicroStrategy's stock has not been spared. MSTR has seen its value drop by 24%, and the value of Bitcoin has also slumped considerably along with the wider cryptocurrency markets. This is cause for concern as the company's subsidiary macro strategy took out a $205 million loan from Silvergate Bank in March 2022, with a portion of MicroStrategy's Bitcoin used as collateral against the debt. MicroStrategy then used the proceeds to continue the firm's Bitcoin acquisition strategy. Saylor, who was worth $1.6 billion at the beginning of March, saw his net worth drop below the $1 billion mark on Wednesday, according to Forbes estimates. His fortune is largely tied up in MicroStrategy stock and Bitcoin, two assets that have tumbled during the recent market sell-off. Shares of software company MicroStrategy, which Saylor co-founded in 1989, are down more than 61% in the last month, including nearly 30% in the last two days. Bitcoin, the world's largest cryptocurrency, has fallen 38% since late March, when it traded at around $48,000. It has shed over $300 billion in market value since then. Few companies have hitched their wagons to Bitcoin as MicroStrategy has. The software company, which does not provide services in the cryptocurrency sector, has plowed over $4.5 billion into buying Bitcoin at the direction of Sailor, its CEO. MicroStrategy held 129,218 Bitcoins on its balance sheet as of March 31. That mega bet is now underwater. MicroStrategy's average purchase price for Bitcoin was $30,700 per token. The cryptocurrency was trading around $29,925 as at the time of writing the script for this video. However, in a new interview with Natalie Brunel on her YouTube channel, Michael Saylor appeared as bullish as ever. He even stated that he found Kathy Wood's prediction of $1 million Bitcoin too conservative. Before we listen to Michael Saylor, we want to use this opportunity to thank all our viewers and subscribers. Thank you so, so much for watching and liking our videos. We love and appreciate you a lot. You spoke with uh, Kathy Wood on stage at the Bitcoin conference. One of the things Kathy said when she was talking with you is she expects a million dollar Bitcoin by 2030. How do we get there? For those out there who are really shaking with these prices right now, uh, how do we get to a $1 million Bitcoin by 2030? Do you think that's possible as well? When she said that, I thought she's so conservative. Like, <laughs> I thought, I can't believe she said just a million in front of this audience. But but uh, that was just my reaction. It's kind of interesting. Other people have different reactions. So you think um, more than a million U.S. dollars by 2030? I, I I don't. I wouldn't put a date on it. Okay. But I think it's worth more than a million. I I, I think that uh, the next uh, the next steps are um, are pretty clear. My checklist would be uh, the administration. Um, the administration recognizes Bitcoin check that happened in March. Mm -hmm. uh, the treasury, you know, accepts it, check that happened in April. So we've already got the administration that recognizes uh, a need uh, to support uh, the digital asset economy. And they recognize that Bitcoin is, a, is an asset class. I think the SEC approving a spot ETF will be an important milestone. I feel like we're moving toward that with this GBTC process. Yeah. So, I would be disappointed if it isn't approved, but but I'm I'm certain, reasonably certain, we'll get a spot ETF sometime in the next 36 months. I can't imagine that we won't, and maybe we'll get one within the next 12 months. I, I would say it's more than 50% likely in the next 12 months, and it's 90% likely, I think, in the next 36 months. I think um, uh, clear guidance on stable coins is, is a, a, another important thing. When Senator Toomey was speaking uh, to Janet Yellen yesterday, he brought this up and he said, can we get legislation this year? And she said, I would think so. I would think we should.
So there's a there's agreement between the administration, and that's a Democrat administration, and a Republican senator, right? So the Republicans would like this, the Democrats would like this. So I think that that kind of guidance is important because there's a massive demand for digital currencies in the form of stablecoin. And yet the uncertainty, <clears throat> the fact that the currencies are currently being delivered in the form of stable coins, which are unregistered securities, which are unlicensed, which are in a regulatory gray zone, right? Kind of, it, it has the industry twisting in the wind because really big banks can't get it. They can't issue. None of the banks can issue, even though the world wants a trillion dollars worth of digital currency, mm -hmm. right? So, so resolving that, Will be create a, will create a big on ramp for capital into the digital economy, and ultimately that on ramp in the capital means, I mean, imagine if I had five hundred billion dollars of USD stablecoin, and then I could, and I, it was sitting uh, in a secure with a secure counterparty that I trusted, and now I could move it by a lightning, mm -hmm. on Tarot, right, right. You you really could have six billion people with a mobile phone moving millions of transactions a day, maybe tens or hundreds of millions of transactions a day, paying for everything. You mm -hmm. see a massive avalanche, a conversion of all the weak currencies to the dollar. You see, you mm -hmm. see digital dollars become the medium of exchange everywhere in the world, moving on, on lightning rails, mm -hmm. which would be incredibly good for Bitcoin, incredibly good for the entire crypto right. economy. So I think that the stable coins uh, maturing is a big deal. I think that the FDIC, uh, when they provide guidance to banks that allow banks to either custody Bitcoin or take Bitcoin as collateral against loans, I think a bank would probably have, they can't really use Bitcoin as part of their asset package or be like, have to be reserved for one-to-one. -one. Whereas, you know, the dollar is reserved for it 5% or sometimes it's zero. Like, a bank could issue a hundred billion dollars of loans for zero reserve. And then when they're, you know, at some point they could take $5 billion of us treasuries and issue a hundred billion dollars in debt against mm -hmm. it. So I think the FDIC has a very important lever in the way that they, um, in the guidance they give for Bitcoin as an asset. And I think that uh, the other big news that happened, uh, it's, it's happening right in front of us. Natalie, I mean, the sound and the fury causes people to miss these things that really matter. Yesterday, when the Secretary of the Treasury said we need to get this done this year and, and said it in the Senate, that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. And this morning, FASB met and voted seven to zero in their meeting uh, to, uh, to uh, create a formal project to review accounting for digital assets, which means Bitcoin. And right now the accounting is toxic and prejudicial. Mm -hmm. So there's pretty much no outcome that I could imagine that wouldn't be beneficial or better than the current status quo from a gap accounting point of view. So, so FASB, FDIC, Treasury, White House, SEC, all of these things are, are they're all gating items for institutional adoption of an asset class. And all of them are in motion right now. And even the negative things, like you can look at, uh, look at the market and all the trading down. I don't think it's necessarily negative. I think you have a lot of liqu uh, liquidity or a lot of leverage shaken out of the system. Everyone, that's, everyone that don't, doesn't know the difference between Bitcoin and every other altcoin kind of is, it now has an interesting example of the difference between Bitcoin and uh, Luna. Right, they understand the difference. At least, at least, figure to we understand the difference. The regulators are now going to have a catalyst to move faster, right? Because now, you know, Gensler said, you know, someone's going to get hurt if we don't fix this. And the congressional view three months ago was, no, don't don't do anything, don't move too fast because you might mess up the market. Mm -hmm. And Gensler said, well, a lot of these are these exchanges are trading security tokens and we don't know what they're backed by. And when they crash, someone's going to lose a lot of money. Now, I think the political sentiment will shift to, OK, we understand why you think we should regulate this. Right. We understand why the administration thinks this needs to be brought into the public policy framework. I think this will bring the Democrats and the Republicans together. And I think this will bring the Congress together with the administration 
I already think we know where their sentiments are. They want safe, tr safe, transparent, well-backed stable coins. They mm -hmm. think Bitcoin is digital property. They think that some of the other, the other security tokens ought to be treated as securities with some disclosure. Mm -hmm. That's what they think. Saylor took to Twitter on May 10 to assuage investors of the company's ability to cover its debt, with MacroStrategy's $205 million loan meeting $410 million of collateral, with 115,109 Bitcoin as further collateral available to pledge to service the loans. Saylor noted that the value of Bitcoin would have to fall below $3,562 for the firm to run out of Bitcoin to further back the loan. Saylor, however, is undeterred. As he said in a tweet on Friday, the best is yet to come. Saylor is not the only crypto fortune to plummet amid the market sell-off. Coinbase's stock is down more than 66% in the last month, bruising the net worths of its billionaire founders, Brian Armstrong and Fred Aysom. As Michael Saylor said in the interview, Kathy Wood Bitcoin prediction of a million dollars and very conservative. This aligns with our view here at Savvy Finance that we will see a million dollars Bitcoin price someday in the near future. Please hurdle your Bitcoin and stay savvy till our next video.